There's basically three general answers God gives us when we ask him for something. Yes, no, and wait. In other videos, I've talked about when God says yes and how to know when God is saying no. I'll leave some links in the description below so you can watch those two videos if you're interested. In this video, I'm going to give you four signs that God might be saying to wait. Number one, when God is saying wait, you won't have a clear yes or no. Oftentimes, what happens is that we do get a clear yes or no, but we don't like that answer and therefore our hope overrides what we know God is actually saying and therefore we're hoping God is just saying wait, hoping that that wait one day turns into the answer that we want. Perhaps the most common example of this scenario that I'm describing here is with relationships. Perhaps someone wants to be in a relationship with someone and they're praying about it and God gives them a clear no. But that person obviously really wants to be with this other person that they're praying about. And so sometimes you can deny that no and cling to a wait. And you just keep waiting, hoping that one day this wait will turn into a yes. So if someone told you that, no, I don't like you that way, or you pursued a woman and she said a clear no, or she starts dating someone else, or a guy said he would um, be interested in you, but then he just disappears and he never returns. Through those scenarios, God is giving you a no. This relationship is not going to work out. But sometimes we can cling to the weight, hoping that it one day changes, even though God has pretty clearly spoken through these scenarios. When God is truly telling you to wait, there won't be a clear yes or no. Going with the dating example again, maybe you're getting to know someone and you know things are going well, but not so well where you feel like, hey, it's time to move into an official relationship. And so you pray to God and you're not sure. Usually that's when God is saying wait, because over time he will then give you clarity on if this is a clear yes or a clear no. As Habakkuk 2 verse 3 explains, for the revelation awaits an appointed time. It speaks of the end and it will not prove false. Though it linger, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. So in summary of point one, when you're unsure, truly unsure, and not just denying what you know God really is saying, then perhaps God really is telling you just to wait. Number two, when God is telling you to wait, this season of waiting will actually benefit you. It's not always the right choice to wait. Sometimes God is actually telling us to act immediately. A great example of this is when there's temptation in our life. We're supposed to flee temptation immediately and try to change that circumstance as quickly as we can so we don't fall and turn from God. But at other times in life, we really are called by God to go through a season of patiently waiting. So how can you know which season God is calling you to be in and what he's telling you in your prayer time? Well, you can often know what God is saying by the fruit of the action that you feel led to take. In other words, when you would be waiting and it would just be hurting you needlessly and you would be going through a season that would be damaging you and hurting your walk with God by not acting, then that means God is not telling you to wait. Jesus said, you shall know them by their fruit. God always does what is best for us and brings him the most glory. So when God is truly telling you to wait, this season will benefit you and bring you glory. Now that doesn't mean it's going to be easy. God doesn't always do what's easiest for us. Rather, God does what is best for us, even when it means it will be harder up front, but God knows sometimes we have to go through hard seasons so that we can be benefited for the rest of our lives. As Isaiah 40 verses 30 and 31 state, even youths shall faint and be weary and young men shall fall exhausted, but they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Number three, when someone is blocking your way forward with evil intent, 
oftentimes God is telling you to wait for his justice. The Bible gives us many different options on how to deal with people who are harming us. For example, in Matthew 18 verses 15 through 20, if another believer is personally sinning against you, there's a three-step process laid out in that passage of how you can go about dealing with someone who's trying to harm you and sinning against you. Or for example, in Romans 13, we're taught that God God has given authority to civil leaders in our society to enforce justice. And so sometimes God might call you to actually report a crime that's being committed against you so that the proper authorities can deal with this person who's committing evil against you. But at other points in scripture, it's very clear that God tells us to wait for him to bring about his own vengeance and justice. For as Psalms 37 verses 7 through 9 state, Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not over the one who prospers in his way, over the man who carries out evil devices. Refrain from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not yourself, it tends only to evil. For the evildoers shall be cut off, but those who wait for the Lord shall inherit the land. And number four, if you're going through a season of suffering, God could be telling you to wait on him. There's basically two general responses that we often need to make when we're in a season of suffering or when we're in the midst of a storm. And those two options are acceptance and change. Sometimes God will show you exactly what you need to change in your life so you can get through this season of suffering as quickly as possible. But at other times in life, Life, things aren't that clean and neat and clear and God will actually keep us in a confusing season of life but tells us to wait and depend on him during that season of suffering. So if there's no quick fix and there's no clear path of what God is telling you to change immediately, he could be emphasizing the acceptance part and the waiting part of life that we often have to go through with the Lord. As Isaiah 33 verse 2 states, O Lord, be gracious to us. We wait for you. Be our arm every morning, our salvation in the time of trouble. God desires his people to love him and to remain faithful even when life is not going the way we want. It's not easy, but the true test of faith is how we respond to God when life is difficult and we are confused about why God is allowing this season of suffering. How you respond in these seasons of life is the real test of your salvation. Those who truly know God will remain faithful and not forsake God during the hard times. So if you are going through a difficult time in life and your heart is breaking, sometimes God might simply be saying, wait. Here's two more videos about how to know what God is saying to you. The video on the top is about how to know when God is saying yes to you. And the video down here is how to know when God is saying no to you. I would encourage you to watch those if you want to keep learning with me. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss any of the new videos I'm putting out every single week. I'm Mark from ApplyGodsWord.com. I really hope you enjoyed this. Until next time, God bless.